Victoria gets into two fights, one with Sally and one with Adam, and Sally has a harrowing encounter with Adam. During today's episode of The Young and the Restless, Victoria confronts Nick, Nate makes a proposal to Elena, and Chelsea has a profound chat with Lily. Adam enters the building, sees Sally, and greets her. She'd rather not have another encounter like their last one. This time, Adam says he won't drink and drive. His first question is whether or if she had a pleasant Thanksgiving. They watched an old movie and ordered takeout to celebrate. Adam said he and Connor and Chelsea ate together in peace. Sally agrees with you that it's a pleasant thought. She declines his invitation to go out with her because she is already expecting company. Adam promises to keep it brief and apologizes for entering her room to confront her. Alcohol, sadness, and fury can be lethal. Please tell me you can forgive me. Sally appreciates Adam's remorse, but she still can't bring herself to forget what happened the night before. She is praying that the holiday gave him some time to think about why they aren't together. After giving it much thought, Adam realizes his actions were wrong. He feels bad that he said Nick doesn't care about her, because obviously Nick does. It has nothing to do with Nick that they belong together, rather, it is what they shared that makes them so. The proposal is still on the table, and Adam has no plans to retract it. He is seriously considering asking her to marry him. We are stronger as a unit. Adam claims that she is the only lady who has ever seen him for who he is. Sally would like it if he would quit saying that because her previous assumptions about him were incorrect. You made me cry, she cries out in despair. And with this last-ditch offer, you've managed to destroy my heart even more. Really, you think I want to be married with this attitude? Adam knows he made a mistake. My apologies, Sally, you deserve a more grandiose display of my amorous feelings for you than I was able to muster. Still, he has no regrets about his approach to her. Sally says she considered their marriage while they were together, but not in this form or at this time. Why are you torturing me, she cries out. In Nick's words, you wanted to see me? Nick enters Victoria's office. Victoria informs him that he has no business trying to undermine her new CEO in such a brazen manner. She says he should have spoken to her first if he had a problem with her being hired. Nick responds with an incredulous, are you kidding? Before pointing out that he has already mentioned his many complaints about it, Victoria says he should have backed the decision or kept his misgivings to himself as CEO. Nick felt it was important to let Nate know that he doesn't trust him and that his sister should be very careful around him. What will happen when Nate realizes he needs more authority than you're ready to give him? To Victoria, that's an admirable quality in Nate. Therefore, she doesn't feel intimidated by it. Nick teases her for being overconfident like their father. It's a risky game, to put it mildly. Victoria hopes that Nick, in his capacity as COO, will support her when she takes a chance with Nate. Nick retorts, You made the same prediction about Sally that you just made about me. He says it wasn't fair what she did to her. Victoria is curious as to the level of commitment between them. To Nick's knowledge, she is not at Newman, so Victoria need not worry, sighing Victoria. She worries about him and won't stand by while he suffers. When they go home, Nate gushes about Elena's appearance. She is anxiously awaiting her meeting with Lily to discuss the medical podcast. She has concerns because of Lily's feelings for him. The members of Nate's family won't take their frustrations out on her, in Nate's opinion. Recent encounters with Devon left Elena with a sense of judgment, and she may be guilty simply by association. Nate suggests the best option and suggests she bring her podcast back to Newman Media. He points out that she relocated specifically so that they could collaborate on projects. He had to make amends for his mistake of pledging 50 episodes, as Elena points out, she has a strong feeling of commitment to his cousins, Devon and Lily, and would never break her pledge to them. Nate probes her allegiance to him further by asking, what about that? Billy and Lily reconcile at Crimson Lights after their earlier fight. She argues that she was right all along. He is, in fact, rechecking in on Chelsea. Billy has just returned from getting coffee and informed Lily that he wants to make up to her, asking, Can we have a word? They calm down and Billy apologizes to Lily for the fight and the difficulty his relationship with Chelsea has caused. Even Lily thinks it's awful. Chelsea is important to her, and she fully backs his participation. 
When he labeled her petty for being concerned about his involvement, it was extremely hurtful and unacceptable. The blame for this goes to Billy. Lily believes he is keeping her on the outside as he accuses her of not understanding his actions in regards to Chelsea. These days, it seems to me, it's Chelsea who's trying to make you feel unique. To think that I was once expected to fill the position she now does is absurd. After reassuring Lily that he loves her, Billy promises that he will give his full attention to Chelsea until she is no longer in danger. Lily assures Billy that she believes there is more at play here than only wanting to aid Chelsea. Billy maintains that all he wants is for her to be healthy and content. The bigger mystery, in Lily's opinion, is what he's looking for. As of right now, Billy isn't quite convinced. His schedule hasn't allowed him to. I know because of Chelsea, Lily cuts in. She wants to be there for him, but she has the impression he doesn't want her to be. That, Billy says emphatically not to worry about. Chelsea is napping in her flat when the voices start talking to her, causing her to sit bolt upright. She brews a cup of tea and texts her friend, explaining that she needs to talk and would like to meet. Lily gets a text from Chelsea in crimson lights, saying that she wants to talk. Her confusion is understandable. After first asking, do you want me to come with you? Billy says he'd rather not become involved and offers his apologies. Nate promises Elena that under Victoria's guidance, he will succeed where Devon failed. Elena is praying he is correct. He convinces her that they should go with him. As the saying goes, let's do it together. When Victoria enters Crimson Lights, Billy approaches her quietly to inquire about Johnny's well-being. He seems okay, according to her. Billy was eager to hear everything about her antics with Nate. I find that to be very abhorrent. Victoria gives a sarcastic eye roll. Nate will do a fantastic job, and she was under no duty to keep Sally on. Billy is more concerned about the fact that she is using him as a mole in order to infiltrate Chancellor Winters and has little interest in the former. Victoria is aware of Devon's convictions in this regard. The advice Billy gives her to stop lying is spot on. Victoria makes a snide comment about how she had no idea he cared so much about the firm before he quit. She didn't consider how much Billy's mother and Lily value the company until he told her. And she didn't give a second thought to what Johnny and Katie would say if they found out their mother had tried to steal his father's business. Victoria snarls, ex-employer. If she had done that, she would have told the youngsters that she wanted them to learn to cooperate with one another. Billy makes a snide comment about how proud of her dad he is. And you know who else would have approved, Victoria asks. Do you? Catherine. Are you kidding me? Billy inquires. Victoria informs him that her father was to inherit Chancellor per her will. It's the reality of the business world, and if he doesn't like it, he should be thankful he no longer works in corporate America. At society, as Sally is about to depart, Adam approaches her to express regret for the hurt he's caused and his appreciation for the fact that she still cares deeply about him. They had a shot, but it didn't work out, Sally tells him. I've had to move on. I won't. Her attempts to protect her heart from Adam are futile. She isn't the type to put her own safety ahead of her enthusiasm, and he can sense it. He assures her, that's not who you are, and adds that she does not deserve better. Lily goes to see Chelsea and inquires about her health. Since Billy intervened to prevent Chelsea from killing herself, she has been gradually improving. She felt guilty for interrupting him and wished to express her regret. She wants to be as honest as possible with her because Chelsea knows she didn't understand what was going on at the time. Chelsea is trying to be as open as possible with Lily so that she doesn't misinterpret the dynamic between her and Billy. I'll give you the most forthright answers I can if you have any queries, I said. Lily appreciates Chelsea's honesty and expresses her appreciation. Chelsea praises Billy for giving her a new lease on life. Indeed, I owe him absolutely everything. She should not give him all the credit, Lily tells her, because she also put in a lot of effort. Since Billy can't be there for her at all times, she believes it's vital that she has a group of people she can turn to instead. Chelsea appreciates Lily's openness. Lily encourages her by saying, I'm rooting for you and I know you have a lot of people behind you. She prays that you'll keep on recovering and creating a fantastic new life for yourself. At red lights, Sharon inquires of Billy if he has come to see Chelsea. He's been waiting for Lily, who is currently in the attic with Chelsea. He feels guilty for giving her so much of his time and energy, 
but he can't help himself. Sharon considers this to be par for the course. Billy appreciates all that Sharon has done. In response to her own good fortune, Sharon is now helping others. Sally is at a loss for words in front of Adam at society. After seeing Nick arrive, she announces that she must leave. At the door, she approaches to meet him. As he looks up and spots Adam, he nods his head in agreement. In a conversation with Nick, Sally rambles on about her plans to start her own interior design firm. While staring at Adam, he makes enthusiastic comments and then accuses her of trying to divert his attention with idle chatter. Just what is going on? Adam comes over at that that moment, thanks Sally for the conversation, and expresses his satisfaction at having been able to get everything out in the open with her. At Crimson Lights, Billy inquires of Sharon as to whether or not she believes he has a savior complex. Although Sharon disagrees, she does advise that he take care of himself. It's clear that Billy won't be backing down. Moments afterwards, Adam enters and introduces himself to Sharon. In short, he appreciates her presence. Adam explains that he has come to meet Chelsea and inquires as to whether or not she is in the upper floor. She is, Billy tells him, but she and Lily are having a private talk, so he should give them some room. Adam is irritated. During their time together at society, Nick inquires as to the specifics of how Sally and Adam were able to put their differences aside. According to her, he expressed regret for his actions. Also, Nick says, and his desperate proposal. Sally is confused as to whether he is implying that her future fiance would have to be in dire straits before proposing to her. Nick thinks that he should have gone with jarring instead, and that it was a poor choice of words. Even while he understands why she could be nervous about Adam's proposal, she hasn't yet shared her thoughts with him. Sally is sick of dwelling on the past and is ready to put it behind her. Nick says that he is available whenever she feels like talking about it again. Sally expresses her appreciation and then shifts the conversation to the upcoming Thanksgiving holiday. Nick says that he invited her out to supper, but he got that she preferred to eat alone. He then moves on to discuss the annual holiday party that Sharon hosts and in which New Hope participates. Sharon and the kids have this awesome tradition. Nate, who is staying in the penthouse, is waiting for Elena to consider his proposal. Of course I will, she retorts. Nate invites her to accompany him on a business trip to California, saying that he knows just the place for her to do some deep thinking. Indeed, we have always been able to work well together since we have complementary skills and personalities. Elena hopes they can get back to how things used to be. To quote Nate, I've been missing us. There is a passionate kiss between them. After Lily and Billy's unexpected appearance at Crimson Lights, Sharon proposes to Adam that they give them some space. The question Billy wants to know is, how'd it go? According to Lily, everything went swimmingly, and Chelsea expressed gratitude for his help by telling Lily that she would not be here today without him. It was also Chelsea seeing if she's been hogging too much of his time. Billy is interested in hearing Lily's response to that. Lily claims to have told Chelsea she agrees with the plan, adding that she also has other supporters. Billy feels she made some good points and wants to take her out to lunch. I think Lily would appreciate it. They embrace one other passionately and kiss. For her generosity in forgiving Billy, he expresses gratitude. As a result of their conversation, Lily has a better appreciation for the good deed he is doing by assisting Chelsea. Since Billy is the one who drove, the two of them will meet at society.